Forrest Tucker. Tucker described himself as a farm boy. He was born in Plainfield, Indiana on February 12, 1919. Son of Forrest A. Tucker and his wife, Doris Herring Lake. His mother had, has been described as an alcoholic. Tucker began his performing career at age 14 in the at the 1933 Chicago World's Fair, pushing the Big Wicker tourist chairs by day and singing Throw Money at Night. After his family moved to Washington, D.C., Tucker attracted the attention of Jimmy Lake, the owner of the Old Gaiety Burlesque Theater, by winning a Saturday Night Amateur Contest on consecutive weeks. After his second win, Tucker was hired there full-time as Master of Ceremonies, but left when it was soon discovered that he was underage. He graduated from Washington Lee High School, Arlington, Virginia, near Washington, D.C., in 1938, and joined the United States Cavalry was stationed at Fort Myer in Arlington County, Virginia, but discharged for, once again, being underage. He returned to work at the Old Gaiety after his 18th birthday. When Lake's Theater closed for the summer of 1939, Tucker was helped by a wealthy mentor to travel to California and try to break into film acting. He made a successful screen test and began auditioning for movie roles. In his own estimation, Tucker was in the mold of the large, ugly guys, such as Wallace Berry, Ward Bond, and Victor McLaughlin, rather than a matinee idol. His debut was as a powerfully built farmer who clashes with the hero in The Westerner, 1940, which starred Gary Cooper. Tucker had a supporting role in The Great Awakening, 1941, for United Artists. Overcoming a feeling in Hollywood that fair hair did not photograph well, he quickly attained leading man status, starring in PRC's Emergency Landing in 1941. He signed a contract with Columbia Pictures. At Columbia, Tucker had a supporting role in one of their lone wolf pictures. Counter Espionage, 1942, followed by a Boston Blackie entry, Boston Blackie Goes Hollywood, 1942. He was borrowed by Metro Goldwyn Mayer for Keeper of the Flame with Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn. Like many other movie actors at the time, Tucker enlisted in the United States Army during World War II. He earned a commission as a second lieutenant. Tucker resumed his acting career at the war's end. Metro Goldwyn Mayer borrowed him for the classic film The Yearling in 1946. Warners borrowed him to play Errol Flynn's rival for Eleanor Parker in Never Say Goodbye the same year. Back at Columbia Pictures, he was in Corner Creek, 1948, with Randolph Scott. In 1948, Tucker left Columbia and signed with Republic Pictures. His first films for them were Hellfire, 1949, and The Last Bandit, 1949, with Wild Bill Elliott. He made Montana Bell for Republic with Jane Russell. It was sold to RKO. Tucker had a role in Republic Sands of Iwo Jima, 1949, as P.F.C. Thomas, a Marine with a score to settle with John Wayne Sergeant Stryker. He went back to Columbia to support Scott again in the Nevadan, 1950. Tucker was promoted to star roles with California Passage in 1950. He followed this with Rock Island Trail in 1950. Tucker was back to supporting actor for Hoodlum Empire, 1952. Then over at Paramount, he co-starred with Sterling Hayden in Flaming Feather in 1952. He supported Charlton Heston in Pony Express, 1953. Tucker went to England in support of British film star Margaret Lockwood in Laughing Anne, 1953, a co-production with Republic. Back in the United States, he went back to work for Republic. San Antone, 1953, with Rod Cameron. Flight Nurse, 1953, and Jubilee Trail, 1954, with Joan Leslie. He returned to England to make another with Lockwood. Trouble in the Glen, 1954, and stayed on to make... Break in the Circle, 1955, for Hammer Films. Tucker made some films for Allied Artist. Paris Follies of 1956, filmed in 1955, and Finger Man. Then supported Randolph Scott once more in Rage at Dawn, 1956. Tucker had a two-year stint on television, playing the well-received role of a charter boat captain in Bermuda in the series Crunch and Deaths, from 1955 to 1956, with Sandy Kenyon. He was top billed in Fox's the Quiet Gun in 1957, and supported Charlton Heston in Three Violent People, 1957. Hammer Films in Britain asked him back to play the lead in The Abominable Snowman, 1957. He stayed on in England for The Strange World of Planet X, 1957, and The Trollenberg Terror. The year 1958 brought another turning point in his career when he won the role of Beauregard Burnside, Mamie's first husband in Auntie Mamie, the highest grossing U.S. film of that year. Tucker showed a flair for light comedy under the direction of Morton DaCosta that had largely been unexplored in his roles in westerns and science fiction films. He supported Joel McRae in Fort Massacre in 1958 
and had the lead in Counterplot. Tucker was cast as Professor Harold Hill in the national touring production of The Music Man in 1958 and played the role 2,008 times over the next five years, including a 56-week run at the Schubert Theater in Chicago. Following his Music Man run, Tucker starred in the Broadway production of Fair Game for Lovers in 1964. In 1961, Tucker appeared on NBC in Audie Murphy's short-lived Western series, Whispering Smith. Tucker played the outlaw Bob Dalton in the 1963 episode, Three Minutes to Eternity, of the syndicated Western series, Death Valley Days, a dramatization of the simultaneous bank robberies by the Dalton Gang in Coffeyville, Kansas. Tucker appeared in CBS's Appointment with Adventure, the 1956 series finale titled, Two Falls for Satan, and ABC's Channing, a drama about college life that aired during the 1963-64 season. Tucker turned to television for his most famous role, starring as a frontier capitalist Sergeant Morgan O'Rourke in F Troop, 1965-1967. Though F Troop lasted only two seasons on ABC, the series has been in consistent syndication since, reaching three generations of viewers. Two of his Gunsmoke episodes feature Tucker in his cavalry uniform again, as the unconventional Sergeant Holly. 1970. After the close of F Troop, Tucker returned to films and the character roles like The Night They Raided Minsky's, 1969, Barcaro, 1970, Chisholm, 1970, Welcome Home Johnny Bristol, 1972, and Cancel My Reservation, 1972. He had the lead in The Wild McCulloch's, 1975, and was a supporting actor in the television movie A Real American Hero, 1978. On television, Tucker was a frequent guest star, including a total of six appearances on Gunsmoke, and the reoccurring role of Jarvis Castleberry, Flo's a strange father, in the 1976-1985 TV series Alice, and its spin-off Flo. Tucker was a regular on three series after F Troop, Dusty's Trail, 1973 with Bob Denver, The Ghostbusters, 1975, which reunited him with F Troop co-star Larry Storch, guest star on The Bionic Woman as J.T. Connors, and Filthy Rich, playing the second big guy, Beck. He continued to be active on stage as well, starring in the national productions of Plaza Suite, Showboat, and the Championship Season. Tucker returned to the big screen after an absence of several years in the Canon Films action film Thunder Run, 1986, playing the hero, trucker Charlie Morrison. His final film appearance was Outtakes, a low-budget imitation of The Groove Tube. At 6 feet 5 inches, Tucker tied Sterling Hayden as the tallest star in Hollywood. Co-star Marie Windsor recalled that she was delighted to play opposite someone her own size. Tucker was married four times. He was a Republican. Tucker, who had battled lung cancer for more than a year, as well as having a series of minor illnesses, collapsed and was hospitalized for the second time in a week on his way to the ceremony for his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on August 21, 1986. He died at the Motion Picture and Television Country House and Hospital on October 25, 1986. A few months after the theatrical release of Thunder Run and Outtakes, he was interred at Forest Lawn, Hollywood Hills Cemetery, in the Hollywood Hills.